And you can use pure ink to draw all these lines in, in pure ink with a, a stiff brush to begin with. That create a framework, a frame of reference. Okay. Um, here is the the fork, kind of the chicken feet. He he, he really don't really. Um, he's so childish, kind of like a Picasso. You know, he does primitive art. His fork. He's a, he's a carpenter, so uh, this is too much like a chicken feet. Let me just break that. Um, this is a big group, but this two combined is a big one, but I will consider this like a medium. Medium, it's uh, still not in the middle. Okay, not in the middle. Um, that should point to the, to the moon a little bit. So let's just do that. And uh, here is a small uh, middle ground, I think. So you can see the, supposedly see the root a little bit. But it's voided. So it's getting low. Also it's like a perspective. So the viewer is on this, this side. OK. Um, and he has perspectives, definitely. Not, not every. Traditional artists don't really know this, but, uh, but we, yeah, we have like less detail in the distance in, in the early years, you know. But um, this one certainly has some uh, big and small perspective that goes around the house. So we're going to do the house. <coughs> you, you have to leave the the room for the um, trees, right? I think it's easier to hold it, just do the trees, because it's kind of hard to imagine the tree. So we just do the tree first. This is my middle tree. I add dark. Just do the dark now. The big tree, big, big dots. Yeah. So the dots size has to do with distance. Just like that. Oh, there's a house. Okay, I have enough room for that. And you can combine them. Okay. And here, it's, gets, it's getting uh, light, right? So without reloading, provided you have a big brush like this, uh, if you reload to try to uh, assume you know, they're, this, they're in the same stroke. Uh, so just keep doing this, getting smaller. Yeah, he, he's, so, he's a master of controlling this. Just, you know, with the dots, it creates distance. Um, let's just wait, because I, 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 I need to know the, the size of the, the roofs now. Okay, so there's one. Just like that. Oh, too fast. He does really slow work, slow stroke. Um, okay. And then it doesn't matter if the house is straight or not. So um, Amy would do a good job. <laughs> you, 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 if you have, you know, like a. But he doesn't really violate the, the rules of the perspective. It's just not straight lines. It's, it's more interesting. Shaking is good, you know, waving. No, no eave line, see that? But the, the roof, roof the, the emphasis is on the corner, the control point, the control point, and uh, the uh, ridge. And there's a little bit suggestion of. Okay, just keep continuing. Uh, you want to just to have this in, <coughs> in the front, so this could be added. Okay, that's the first layer. 
And now I dilute the ink. You can just uh, dry the brush also, just as if you do something on on this paper, but on here to reduce a little bit uh, moisture and the uh, value, and then just continue. Um, I like a little bit variation, although you know the. Uh, even the same tone because the stroke can create some uh, subtle difference, but so sometimes you can add just a little bit particles maybe. So overnight ink is good. I use uh, um, the ink cake. Ink cake is uh, create some, uh, uh, what do you call this, overnight ink uh, texture. The Pastelish uh, grains, that, that's the right term. More grainish. So you just. It's almost like a wash, you know, but uh, you, you use uh, dotting strokes. The purpose is to f uh, make this roof standing out and eliminate the unwanted white. I see vague trees there. Um, so and this uh, chunk needs to, to ma match the value of the, the leaves. Just a little bit. So uh, just a few strokes make, uh, define, define the, uh, the dots, make them standing, standing up uh, to become trees, right? So you can add those dry dots later, just like this, you know, you can see. That, that define the, but don't overdo it. You see, uh, when I do this, I do them together as a pattern. So I know the, <coughs> the dance and the sparse, and also the distance, you know, it gets smaller, and then there's no um, detail in that. But here we have a little bit closer uh, to the view, so maybe a little bit darker. Just a few, a little bit. Okay, on this side. And though the brush is uh, uh, at the right tone, if not, you can test it. Uh, I think. Oh, he did it in two takes. I think he did the light first, almost like this, and then added a little, uh, uh, a little darker to create the shade effect. So maybe, um, maybe do this for light first. So just water, water it down, and uh, don't have to be very wet. Though. It, it 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 must show the stroke, and you can go. Just like uh, several uh, curved lines combined, overlap together. So I would do something like that. It, it must go higher. Again, this is a my much squarish composition, so I have to adjust. Or you can make it lower. Uh, we'll make the moon more uh, on this side. So I just make it like that, and even strokes will help. And just go like overlapping; it will create that kind of. Uh, you can go something like that. Just blocking in. I don't think he did the cast shadows. But in other painting he did, he knows about that. Okay, now uh, just do the moon. Um, he did circle it with very light ink, I think, maybe just to position it. Um, you don't have to do a perfect one. And the font is okay. Um, and then go back to this. This time uh, I just use a Chinese color. I mean, uh, what is it? Sumi, Sumi block. Um, 
um, if we just follow Master Chu's approach, he, he just did it in, in a flat wash. But you can see the dark around the moon and then uh, getting lighter and lighter. But this is a pretty even wash. But uh, in, in this painting, you don't have room for the big sky anymore. So I make it smaller. I just do the, the moon around the moon. And just leave a little space. You can use a blotting paper, uh, any you know vestige uh, painting to to block it, to stop, to stop. Yeah, that's a must. Okay, and then you can grade it down a little bit to make it into a grade. Just to grade. Maybe we we don't have to use any blue. Just a gray. And then do this uh, uh, Yue moon, cold moon style of uh, uh, this uh, kind of clouds. I, I think there, there are names for this kind of clouds. It's like cotton. <laughs> okay. And then just do flat light wash to eliminate all the, the white with little and just leave the moon area. And he has a title on this painting. It says, Yue Ming Ren Jing Shi Hou, the time, a moment of a vibrant, uh, uh, bright moon, bright moon and quiet people. The people is quiet now. Right? <laughs> it's a, a field, um, the feeling, yeah. I just, do the shading a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, do I need to enhance that? I probably not. I just like that kind of uh, uh, vagueness, I think it's, but bright, yeah, that's what, uh, if you look at uh, the original uh, color painting in the book, uh, it gives you same feel like an uh, impressionist. Look at the, the, the color, uh, the, 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 just the ink part, you know, it's a very, um, yeah. And this, this is very vibrant. Uh, maybe we, we can add more. If it doesn't work, you know, we can still have a chance to just uh, make uh, the whole sky into a blue. Let me see. We can, uh, this is a concentrate. We, we kind of uh, disperse a little bit to create the, the hollow. Only the, the lid area is blue, right? So a, a big and you have to try to <laughs> to keep working. If not, it might bleed into the the moon. I mean it's just show you that a little bit. Uh, disperse a little bit. I, I think that shape bothers me. I, I would need to work out a little bit. Make it more flow. What uh, Chi Bai Shi does is uh, in like two wash, uh, maybe uh, three steps, it's getting lighter and lighter. Uh, so you can see. And less saturated, maybe.
you know, I try not to use white. Uh, so I missed it a little bit. I like that little white. But it's, it's still there. That, that's the idea. You, know, you don't have to do a perfect render, rendering of the light. But as long as you, you uh, let people know, I know how to do it if I want. That's kind of good. <laughs> so, um, the essence is still Chinese painting, uh, no lighting, but uh, just a, a touch of it from the Western um, I inference, maybe. <laughs> it will create a more universal uh, appeal, I think. And you just dry it, and you can even make it the surrounding area a little darker, I think. Okay, just, um, so we have like a medium light, and then we just add the dark, the last, you can... To make it like an eye shape, maybe a little bit elongated there. And, Okay, let me try it. Um, I think he signed on this side there. And you can plot it. To reduce the, the intensity a little bit. Um, they tell you the the, the light uh, you block out is better than uh, you do it right the first time. You, you, you know there are many ways to make light. Uh, lifting is one, blotting, um, and you can rain it uh, as we did it before. Sometimes we just rain water into it. Did, did I show you? Uh, next week, uh, I mean next class, maybe we'll do more. Uh, different artists, Fu uh, Bao Shi, you know, he used uh, water um, to to get that kind of light. So the light is not on palette; it usually happens on the paper, and uh, usually from dry to wet, and from dark to light. Uh, it's a uh, it, yeah. You have to. It's hard to describe, but uh, uh, I will show you in the future how to get out the light. You can see the remaining ink in the, in the, pit, in the brush is the light here. Uh, I got this uh, gleam. Don't know if, uh, if I like it or not. Um, another thing is that, uh, you know, there's no mistake in Chinese painting. Uh, this, this kind of thing is a mistake. But uh, you know, people may like it, and don't try to copy it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, I I have heard a story. There's a a, a tailor in, in China in, in um, Imperial China when they tried to make a imitation of a Western suit, dress dress. Okay, and uh, he so he got. Uh, uh, a brave, you know, he, he may draw, there's no picture taken, but he, he doesn't know the process, he just know the result, what they look like, right? So he made a, a dress, um, everything looks exactly like the, um, the model, and uh, if you look at on the back of it, or the, on, under the elbow, there's a patch, um, which is 
not in, you know, in, intended. It's, a, it's, a, it's just a, uh, a used, you know, an old dress. That they made a patch to prepare, I mean, to repair a, a hole or something. So the, the tailor didn't know that. He copied even the hole repairing <laughs> patch. <laughs> so that's a story that sh shows you uh, you cannot learn by just a copy. Uh, a teacher is very important to, to show you the process so you know uh, what's supposed to be, or, you, know, you can distinguish uh, the intended and uh, you know, unintended result. There's always unexpected uh, things um, which is good, sometimes bad, but, uh, but those things you cannot copy. Just like you play music, if you listen to the live play, they might make, they might make some uh, uh, mistakes. You don't want to copy those. And this is my performance piece. So, you understand? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is a mistake. Uh, you, you, if you use white to cover, you'll make it worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it looks interesting because... It, it, yeah, it's just amazing. It's part of the media. The beauty of the, the smearing paper, it won't happen on rice paper. Yeah. Why we use rice paper and not using um, watercolor paper? Because uh, on watercolor paper, uh, it's more um, non absorbent, right? It's uh, more like this kind of. It's kind of hard to uh, get a soft. Uh, oh, I think the most dis uh, the the most important difference between um, this is not rice paper, uh, not uh, watercolor paper. But if it's a watercolor paper, you cannot uh, uh, maintain the the shading. Uh, the different, the multiple loading effect in one stroke. You must do it in layers or glazing. You know? mm -hmm. But uh, in Chinese painting, because the paper keeps the the gradation uh, on the on the brush, so you have to you have to load the brush with different uh, uh, ink tonality, and that that is uh, recorded on the paper. And 100 years from now, people can still feel the wetness of that. And it, it can see, if you try to repeat it, and they can tell that 100 years from now. So it, this is the 100 years from, uh, from now, right? It was done in t uh, about uh, 100 years ago. Yeah. So you can, we can still feel the energy, the, the, the painting process. Uh, and uh, uh, when, when we appreciate them, uh, we kind of re repeat the, the action. Uh, in our mind. I don't yeah, don't overdo it. You can see if I keep using my other you know, logic, uh, let's see if I need to complete everything, you know, define everything, uh, then I will uh, ruin it. So that's it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I will sign it after it dries and show you the, the final uh, picture. So it's your turn now to uh, do either the horizontal one or the vertical one. Um, and do all both. Yeah. Okay. Happy painting and uh, happy full moon month. Full moon festival month.